Chief Executive Director of the Ghana Tourism Authority, Akwesi Ajimai, says the Ghanaian economy has seen a boost of over 1.9 billion US dollars as of September 2019 from tourists coming into the country for the year of return. Uh, he spoke to Nuon Falong. The year of return, Ghana 2019, was launched in Washington, D.C. in September 2018 by President Ekufuadu. It is a government initiative to encourage African diasporans to invest and settle in the country. Chief Executive Officer of the Tourism Authority, Akwesi Ajiman, says, as at September, the country had realized over 1.9 billion U.S. dollars. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could track it so we at least have an idea of the actual benefit? What we know is that as of September, we've had about almost 750,000 people come in and uh, the average spent per tourist is currently around 2,589. And so you can do the math from there. He urged Ghanaian businesses to position themselves digitally in order to be visible to tourists. Is there a way to ensure that Ghanaian businesses also benefit from, from these proceeds? What we've tried to advocate is for our uh, hoteliers to now embrace the digital revolution transformation that is happening within the tourism sector. How would you get access to a hotel? Online. You, online. But you might go and then you find that there's only one hotel that has placed themselves online. So that will get the business. He said government is planning a seven-pillar strategy to capitalize on the success of the year. All right, let's speak with uh, Diallo Sombri, who is a year of return steering committee member and president of, and CEO of the Edinkra Group. We also have Dr. Edward Aka Nyamiche, president of the Ghana Hotels Association. Gentlemen, nice to have you. Uh, year of return must be good for everyone. Let me start with you, uh, Doc. Is it good for everyone, like we're being told? Uh, 1.9 billion so far uh, gained by the Ghanaian economy. Does that reflect into your, your net flows? Thanks for the opportunity. I guess you're talking about the hotel. The hotel, yes, good, yes, good, absolutely. Good. That's what I can talk about. <laughs> Not you as a person. You <laughs> would be super rich well, if all of that came to you. I must say, generally, it's been great. Yeah. It's been great. Wonderful idea, mm. wonderful concept. And we, we hope that it will be sustained over the We days. hope that it will be sustained. So, Diallo, you, uh, as a member of the uh, steering committee, plays a critical role in the whole organization. What's the whole concept about? I mean, I think by now most people understand the concept of the year of return, mm. celebrating and commemorating the arrival of the first documented enslaved Africans in the United States in Jamestown, Virginia in 1619. So building the bridge and connecting uh, the diaspora, the African diaspora for mm. people all over the globe. I know that um, uh, for people to return is a big deal, but sometimes we are who are here, I mean, locals, we don't get the understanding of how exactly. important it is for you to connect with your roots. Tell us how important it is for you from that perspective. Well, I mean, for us, it, it serves as our superpower. So, for example, if I asked you where you were from, you would probably immediately indicate where your mother was from, where your father was from, and you would start with a village, right? Yeah. And I'm sure that could be traced back some generations. Yeah. For those of us who are victims of the transatlantic slave trade, we have a gap. We have a gap in our history. Uh, and that gap really was the time where some of us lost our original identity. So just like a, a circle can't be closed until you fill that gap. So in the history of African people, I think that we are now in one of those living moments, just like in the 1960s when Africa was receiving and going, fighting for independence from colonial powers. And in the U.S. we were fighting for civil rights. So I think that this is that next moment yeah. in our overall history, and um, I'm happy to be a part of so, it. So is it like a definition of your real identity? I mean, I am speaking from the perspective of someone who has had experience to live and work in the United right. States of America before. I know the relationship that exists between institutions and human beings. Sometimes you virtually exactly. live like you're a file. You know, I mean, <laughs> your, your case is treated like any other. But how relevant does that, how does that make you, that connection, how important is it to you as a human being and, and all the necessary connection? I could say spiritual connection and all no, of that. No, 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 no. It's extremely important to me, but more than it being important to me, it's important for my children and for my grandchildren. And it's just as important for your children and your grandchildren. 
So we both have responsibilities that we need, we need to do on either side of the Atlantic Ocean. So the same way that we are pushing, you know, me being the steering committee member who's based in the United States from D.C., I'm repping my Washington hat, um, I understand what, what it means for us to get people to come here. Now, what we hope happens after this year is that you all take personal responsibility exactly. to know what it means to begin to teach the children of Ghana and the people of Ghana the history of African people before colonization so they can understand that they're on the other side of colonization, that we were the ones that were taken away and they are the ones that were, were left here. Exactly. And I think that if we're able to collaborate and combine yeah. to address our common issues and challenges together, then we are also able to combine our strengths to solve them. And those, this will bring a lot of fulfillment to you as individuals. But, Doc, let me come to you. The big concerns mm -hmm. that uh, hoteliers, service providers, caterers, etc., have taken advantage of this boom in tourism and uh, people like Diallo coming in to uh, identify with their, 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 their origins. People are taking advantage of that and charging needless, uh, uh, hiking their hotel fees and charging exorbitant prices. Is that the true situation on the ground? I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say so. Actually, yesterday I saw a video clip mm. making the attention. Circulated on social media yes, about exactly. somebody and who had gone for a buffet and then I took the it went viral. To check mm. and the information she gave out was totally, totally wrong. wrong. So, so totally in, wrong. In, 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 mm. There's something called rush hour in business. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it, it happens as normal. I mean, it's, I've it's been normal. to buffets <laughs> at places where it's no longer 90 cities. In, in, in that particular sets. case, okay, it's, it's a special program that the hotel set up with extra extras like uh, Tego sisters appearing, they were giving the extra drinks. Santa Claus was there, gave us some <laughs> presents. So it was a package at two, 290 Ghana cities. It was not a breakfast. She was talking about that nothing to do with it but, but diallo speaks about so i don't want to belabor this point mm -hmm. so that we put too much importance mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. that but diallo speaks about us mm -hmm. taking responsibility mm -hmm. also after the year of return uh then what happens how are hoteliers like yourself and uh, other associated businesses mm -hmm. psyching yourselves up to take responsibility also and make uh, those who go and return feel that they need to come here you see uh, as a sector of the tourism industry we started or initiated some steps to address all of these challenges uh, somewhere in august we even had a press conference related to the year of return mm -hmm. and that was to prompt government to address some of the issues facing the industry issues like uh, electricity cost yeah. issues like uh, taxes even the road network and all, all those yeah. things so we started the whole campaign of making the environment more responsive to the whole concept of the year of return. So we, we, we are, are you, getting... Are you, are you yourself, um, mm. I mean, when I say you, your members, are mm. you investing? I mean, are you reinvesting or you're more like waiting on government to pass some of these tax incentives to keep you in business? Because I know, I mean, from my travel across the country, there are hotels whose mm. services are below standard, mm. I must be mm. honest. Mm. And mm. in a situation like this, where we're getting a lot of visitors coming in, is it your responsibility to invest or are you still standing and knocking at the doorstep of government to give you incentives? No, the hotel sector is one business where most of the job is done by the individual investor. Government does not invest in that part of the business. The only but you were talking about tax incentives and stuff like that. No, uh, this you were talking about, about that investment mm. in the business. Direct investment. Yes, the business. in this terms of private initiatives. Yeah, capital mm. investment in terms of uh, the structures and all those things. We don't get that. What we get is an indirect support. For instance, uh, the Ghana Tourism Authority has done this whole marketing concern the year of return, and we are benefiting from it because yeah. we've been pushing for the meetings, incentives, uh, conference and events package where it will draw in a lot of people and we saw this year of return idea as a great idea but you see when it comes to the industry itself 
that is where the challenge is. And that is where we've been pushing for government to give the industry that extra attention. And I pray so that... So extra attention in which form? Or is it will be strengthening regulations or ensure that... We've commented about regulation rebate. because uh, the regulatory regime itself has some challenges in terms of coordination. Yeah. And then we're talking about the utilities. We have argued that, you see, you go to a lot of parts of the world and electricity... Uh, <laughs> charges. is lower for industry. Thank you. But it's the opposite here. Yeah. And then you talk about the road network. I decided to get some information from our members concerning the, uh, uh, the, the impact of the year of return. And guess what? You go to certain regions, the impact has not been felt. Why? Because in some cases, even the road network to the place. I, 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 I think that you see this <laughs> well, as just the beginning, right? And some of these problems will exist, but uh, it will be ironed out eventually. Is that how you, 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 you approach this? It is. I mean, I approach everything from a glass half full perspective. Yeah. So I've heard a lot of critique about the year of return, which is fine. I'm not particularly party to a critique that's not constructive criticism that doesn't offer a well thought out viable solution. Yeah. What I will say is that my company, the Adinkra Group, we probably have brought somewhere between 800 to 1,000 people to Ghana this year alone, right? And in that, some of the things that I've experienced with hoteliers and restaurants and things like that, I hope that what this year of return has done is helped them understand that people will come and they will spend, just like any other destination in the world, right? But when people spend that money and when you're charging top price, then you have to give top service. Yeah. That is the challenge. That's now, the challenge. I could probably run down a whole list of things that I know personally, hoteliers, restaurants, and people can do to improve their service. But I would like to see hoteliers and restaurants and in the, the hospitality industry invest in training. Train your staff, train your employees. Invest in standard operating yeah. procedures. Mm -hmm. This is not rocket science. Ghana and Africa are not the first places in the world to go through this level of development where people don't mind coming to spend top dollar for top service. But when people come, spending their money, especially for those of us who are not only on just coming to have fun, but it's an emotional and a spiritual journey, and we're actually reconnecting more than just finances, we want to make sure that those services are there. So I would suggest, number one, that the people of Ghana be patient. Yeah with themselves and I with like each that. other, mm -hmm. because it will take some time. But it's well on the way. Ghana right now has the best problem It will of take any time nation to rewrite in the 400-year history. <laughs> I you know. have the best problem mm -hmm. yeah. of anybody right now. Yeah. There are some people who wish they had the problem you have. <laughs> so take this opportunity to make it work. And then I, I would also say Mr. Kwesi Ajiman, yeah. he's a good friend and colleague. I could say for myself personally, I wouldn't be investing my time and energy if I didn't think that the Ghana Tourism Authority had leadership like his as a friend and colleague. So work with him, listen to him, and help him to do this for the next 20 years. Right, Diallo, what a great <laughs> I, I, I'm yeah, glad that Diallo mentioned mm -hmm. training. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's a classic example of where we think we need to really collaborate with government very well. Because I'm sure you're aware of the 1% Tourism I Development mm -hmm. Fund, mm -hmm. which has been created. We, we, we want to see a situation where government or the GTA partners with the hotel industry to invest in training. You see, training is very expensive. And you cannot leave it to only the hotels alone because that is where the issue of the hotel rates will keep coming up. Because even now, people are complaining that the rates are too high. Yeah. And then we burden ourselves with more training and investment in training. So we want to see a situation where government or the GTA and the ministry will collaborate with the, the, the hotels. Let's invest some of the money and get in training expensive. and get things right. It doesn't have to be really expensive. I'm right here. Just mm -hmm. talk to me. We can yeah. work out a deal. I'll take yeah. care of you guys. I'll train everybody <laughs> and help you put together <laughs> your standard operating much. procedures, yeah. your manual, everything. <laughs> we, we wish you a very, uh, very fruitful <laughs> But uh, can I period. mention one last thing? Yes, please. <laughs> the, for us, the year of return has been very successful. Mm. There's no doubt about that. And we actually plan to honor the president at our fourth uh, GHA awards in As January. being a very great initiative. Yes, yes. At least he, had, he supported the concept. He supported mm -hmm. the idea. He mm -hmm. ran with it. He declared the year of return 
mm. and we've come this far. And I must say, I must <laughs> say that I feel very proud when I see people like yourself, Diallo, are taking charge and returning to the homeland to get uh, connected spiritually. Also, it's very good for all of us, uh, including those of us who live here and get the opportunity to travel back and forth. The concern we have is that because we know how systems work in the U.S. and other developed countries, uh, sometimes we sit back and wonder whether you're getting by okay with the systems mm -hmm. you face here. But like you said, it's going to take a while and we need to be patient. Thank you very much uh, for coming. We have uh, somebody very important, uh, Black Rasta, in our studios with us, who has said that the, uh, the, the year of return has lost focus. Black Rasta, it's nice to have you, man. Yeah, thank you so uh, you, much. You've been doing a lot of touring on the back of your uh, the road to Timbuktu. That's right. And so I, I'm sure that in terms of African renaissance, you're right there. You get the sense that this whole year of return, we have uh, we have approached it badly or misplaced priority. What exactly is the concern? Well, I would think that uh, it's a very beautiful initiative and uh, people should understand that this is not the first time black people have actively tried to bring home uh, returnees, the so-called re re yeah. returnees. In fact, as early as 1811, yeah. Paul Kofi was the first black man from this part of the mm -hmm. world called mm -hmm. Ghana now, mm -hmm. who tried to ship in a lot of people. From him was uh, Charles Sam uh, Alfred. He was also from Achim. He brought people actually mm -hmm. to Achim mm -hmm. from Liberia all the way to from America, yeah. you see. And so many other people like Laura Kofi and so on and so So you think we're not acknowledging the history of what all these people exactly. did? Exactly. How did they fail? Mm. Even Marcos Garvey, all of them tried to bring people home. How did they fail? Mm. We should go through all that and let history guide us. Yeah. What yeah. I think is that it's rather a year of tourism mm. rather than a year of return. People were sent out. Now they are returning. What are they returning to? That is what I am talking about. We are looking for people to come home and reconnect with the African spirit. Mm -hmm. If you are saying that you've made $1.9 billion uh, out of this, then you are commercializing the whole thing. You're talking about building statues. Which country has more statues than America? Where these people are supposed to be coming from? So all I am saying is that Please let the basis of the whole return home be emphasized mm. rather than trying to commercialize the whole thing or else we're going to fail. Beyond 2020, what is going to happen to the year of return? You will realize that people, and Luda Chris was here the other day. What did he say? He said he was happy to reconnect with the African spirit. Mm. He did not say he was happy to come and watch dance and singing and all that. No. So we are telling the government, please, don't misplace the priority. Live beyond the rhetorics. We want to see you let the whole diasporan people come home and reconnect with the African spirit. Education is most important. In fact, Chief Alfred Charles failed because there was no education. The Achim people said, oh, you are bringing these people home to come and take our land. We are not going to allow that. And it failed. See? So people should be made to understand that these are brothers and sisters who left us by force. Mm. They are returning home. Their status is unchanged. They are still our brothers and sisters. Mm. The fact that you listen to a different accent doesn't mean charge them differently. Yeah. Doesn't mean treat yeah. them differently. Yeah. They are yeah. our brothers and sisters. But how, how do we take advantage of this boom? I mean, you call it year of tourism rather than year of return. But exactly. How do we all take advantage of this boom and play our individual roles in this? I am surprised that the Ministry of to uh, Culture is a little quiet about this. You see, tourism, yes, it's pushing it. We are going to tourism. How about the cultural aspect mm. of the thing? Don't let us look at How about too the people much. getting to know our dance forms, exactly. our food, our, our lifestyle, our people. Yes. Yeah. The Dagomba, the Ashanti, the this. Let them go through that and be able to tell them, oh, I connect with these people more. Yeah. Rather than base it in a crowd where they come and watch dances and look at statues and go back. No, we want a true year of return where the people coming home are in that spiritual. That is what can keep this thing alive the ancestral connection ancestral rather connection. than coming to watch statues and dance that would work. Black Rasta, nice to have you passing through. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Black Rasta is a musician, is also a radio presenter. I popularly call him the taxi driver.